This business has died at least nine to 10 times. We had to plow our money and our time into building the brand and making sure people knew whatever this brand stands for is original. Once you know that and you trust the brand is original, Chief, a bowl of Hennessy is a bowl of Hennessy. We believe we can do great things in Nigeria. Substandards shouldn't be our mantra anymore. Oh, this is really nice. I like it. The problem with Africans is everything is short-sighted. Until Africa matters, no black life anywhere in the world can ever matter. You will continue to be treated badly until you start to understand that if us over here are not respected, they will never respect you. This is for my subscribers. <laughs> What's up guys, how are you doing today? It's Tayo Aino here again and today I have a very special guest for you guys. Beside me is Lan Ray, who is the founder of Drinks.ng which is the biggest e-commerce drinks platform in Nigeria and today he's going to be sharing his story about how he started this amazing journey. How are you doing today sir? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, first of all guys, we are, you know, we are, we are in Drinks.ng so we are drinking some drinks. I've been following your journey for a very long time. I've heard about Drinks to Energy. I've bought from Drinks to Energy before. So can you tell us how this started? How many years ago was your company founded? So Drinks to Energy was started in March 2013. It'll be 10 years next year. Funny enough, the way it started is a bit weird. So in my previous life, when I worked as a digital marketer, I was working at a friend's company called Iroko TV. Oh. Uh, so yes, so one of the guys that work at Iroko TV. Wow. And Jason, we actually lived in the same block growing up. And then later on down the years, he met a very tenacious and supportive lady called Mary. They got married, so he was like, look, me being the party guy of the group should take care of the bachelor party. Oh. Yeah, so did that in the UK. We needed drinks, so I went to Majestic Wine, which everybody knows in the UK, and then came to Nigeria. I had to do the same thing for the, the party in Nigeria, which we, we had in Festac, and then I just asked everybody, where's the liquor store that I can buy drinks? And everybody just kept on saying, hey, I have a guy's number that you can call, and I was just like, I don't understand this, I have a guy thing. Mm -hmm. Like, why does everybody have a guy? Why can't I just go somewhere, somewhere and buy it. the drinks? So I just thought, no, I don't want a guy. Hmm. I've heard about the counterfeit drinks and, and uh, all sorts of things that go on. So I said, okay, cool. I want to go where they sell the drinks. And I went and they took me to the open market and I was just like, what is this? Why this? Where we've gotten to in Nigeria, why this? And that's what, you know, bred the idea. So after the wedding, went back to the UK, came back a few times with Iroko, did my job and then Jason and Sebastian, yeah, spark. Started spark. Yeah. And that's when I was like, you know what, Jason? I mean, I've done you well, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's time to do me well. Uh, it's time to go. And to be honest with you, him and Sebastian were incredibly supportive. They started us up with our first $100,000 investment, oh, which wow. is the only investment we've gone to today. From what I can hear, it seems like you've always had an interest in drinks. Well, I mean, prior to that period, I had a large amount of knowledge from a consumer point of view. <laughs> um, um, I consumed a lot of it, but then just towards my latter years at university, I met a lady called Karen and she used to invest in wine so that was the first time I got interested in it beyond the consumption I remember I used my student loan which I still haven't finished paying off and, <laughs> and I used that to invest in, in oh, wine wow. from a grape stage to be honest I still have that investment till now I was a digital marketer at heart at the time so I carried on with that and as time went on the opportunity came when I came to Nigeria I saw a bigger opportunity and, and I went for it were you running any other business before this how did you have all this knowledge in terms of running a business to be honest with you this is actually the first business I've ever run. Oh really? I've never run a business before. I've always made small baby step attempts. Prior to going to Iroko, I used to work at IBM. Oh. So I've run departments, which in retrospect sometimes can be looked at as running a business. At the end of the day, the difference between working for someone's company yeah. and running your own business yeah. is just the risk factor. True. The difference is just now, the risk is on you. It's on you, yeah. You know, and then you have to learn a little bit about more things outside of your comfort zone. But it's been an easy transition. You know, I was quite mature and quite experienced before I came into this business. I think I was 31 or 32 or something like that. And to be honest with you, the first three years was a very turbulent time in Nigeria, but they were also turbulent from a business knowledge point of view. I was also learning how to run a business. I was also learning how to, you know, structure a business and put it together. And then doing that in Nigeria as well was, was even more difficult. So I would say I wasn't prepared as much as I should have been prepared to start it up, but we grinded it out. We kept it going. This business has died 
at least nine to ten times it has died. At least when, when you said died, times. what do you mean? We were dead now. I, I just had to revive it. <laughs> like, you know, no, no money, no revenue, oh, wow. you know, very small. But if you're passionate about the business and you want it to keep going, you want it to succeed, you just have to keep being creative and reinventing it. Back then, Jumi, we started the same year as Jumi and Conga. Oh, okay. It started That's 2013 like as well. Yes, oh, we're very yeah. early. We didn't have the money they had. We had $100,000 and we were learning as well. We had a small team. But then the, the e-commerce landscape then wasn't ready. There were no smartphones for, mm -hmm. for the masses. There was only smartphones for the, the upper class. When you have just the upper class as your target market in Nigeria, you almost have little to almost no business opportunity when it comes to the way you market to these guys. So for example now, we have a big middle class to upper class in the UK. We're very cash rich in the UK, but time poor. We're on the other hand in Nigeria, we're cash poor, but time rich. What has made e-commerce grow in the last five, six years is the likes of the whole ecosystem growing. You, like I say, you now have more smartphones that are affordable for everybody. You have more payment platforms that make it easy. And then you have more card availability. People are opening more accounts that have allowed the masses more to come online and have payments. That ecosystem needed to grow for our most valuable asset to grow as well. So we didn't have the money to give free delivery, payment on delivery. We don't do those things. We still don't do it till now. So how were you able to navigate that and still exist? We had to plow our money and our time into building the brand and making sure people knew whatever this brand stands for is original. Once you know that and you trust the brand is original, chief, a bottle of Hennessy is a bottle of Hennessy. We have just had to work over the years to build the delivery system and to make sure we communicate with customers. We invest in the customer service team. about to try this drink that Tosin recommended. You guys remember no, Tosin, right? No, it's Larry that recommended it to. <sighs> oh, this is really nice. I like it. I want you to tell us a little bit about your background. Like, what, what kind of family are you from? Dude, I don't even know if it's humble beginnings, but we, you know, we come from nothing. My parents worked very hard. My mum and dad were the first, I think one is of 16, one is of 15 or something like that. Very big family of the first each. We were born in the UK. Contrary to people's belief, there are poor people in the UK. There are people suffering. And I can tell you about suffering. When I was uh, 16, I came to Nigeria, lived with my grandmother in Mushi, in Itire. I went to Gideon Secondary School in Isolo. Then I went to Model College, Kankor. You know, we grew up in Ogudu for a little bit. So I was in Nigeria all in all for about six years then or so, before I went back to the UK, but you know, Nigerian family that starts from the bottom and works our way up, all of us. This is the VI store. This is the main yes, store. Yes, yes, this is the, the, the main store now. The first in Nigeria, probably the biggest and the best in West Africa, if, if you ask me. I mean, I've been to a few places in, in East Africa as well, and I don't think I've seen anything um, on the scale of what we've done. And, and I don't say that in, in a way to brag. It's more from a standard point. Like, look, we believe we can do great things in Nigeria. Substandard shouldn't be our mantra anymore. Yeah. Um, there's things we can do, we should do them. And that's what we've always done. We were the first to get into e-commerce. We the first to get you know same day delivery across multiple states mm. we were the first to do this um, experience store and if you look at it we've got almost every reputable brand not almost actually we have every reputable brand I, in here I, I think this is the first time i'm actually going into a store like this drink takamaka you guys remember my trip to seashells it was only made in seashells and i'm looking for the drink across lagos you said so yeah till i came here and i saw you have like almost all the varieties that they actually make there yeah, and i also is. saw aviator gin i've not seen that drink in any store so yeah. definitely don't worry i'm going to be paying you lots of visits please yeah. just be paying us yeah. <laughs> visit. you can go online no, no, no need to yes. visit if i get the highest points i'm going to pick one drink when you say your prices are competitive? Absolutely. Like I say to people, sometimes we get customers that walk in and they're just like, oh wow, this place is really nice. Like, and they just walk back out and we're just like, yo, where are you going? They're like, eh, it looks expensive. We're like, looks expensive. No, we are priced the same everywhere across Nigeria. Don't come here and buy drinks and say you're taking them to Ibadan or you're taking them to Oshogbo or you're taking them to Abuja. No, you don't need to do that. Just go online, order your drinks. They will be wherever you want them to be that same day or the next day at its most. My channel represents like you know made in africa when i look around here most of the products i see are not made in africa why do you feel it's that way and what, what do you feel can be done to like change that because i would like to walk into a store and see like a whole section is just made in nigeria made in ghana made in yeah. okay south africa they definitely make wine so. yes absolutely yeah. and, and that's exactly where i was going to go south africa is on the african continent if they can make so many varieties they make wines they make sparkling wines they make whiskeys they make so many drinks but it boils down to the initial point that i made we don't expect good things for ourselves 
So we don't bother investing in good things. Like we invest in this store because we think people deserve a good experience. South Africans expect good things for themselves. So they use their environment and they make the best of the good things. Africa's the richest and the most blessed continent in the world. What we need to make these things is all around us. We're just too lazy and too short-sighted to make an attempt. So we just need more people with the ability to come back, not for yourselves, but for your children and for the future. Face the heat, go through this, and then start to invest and build things. It may not come to fruition in our lifetime, but it will certainly come from... Look, Jack, Jack Daniels didn't start out the way it is. Jack Daniels started in America, supposedly by a black slave. The owner was called Jack. Him and his children and his children's children have built up on that to what we see today as a globally recognized Jack Daniels. The problem with Africans is everything is short-sighted. I spend most of our profit reinvesting but in this business in this industry I'm happy with the investment not because we're making money from it but because I'm forcing other people to do the same thing if my only legacy is I forced other people to modernize this industry and give Africans something that is worthy of them man that makes me happy there's too many things that are obstacles. So for example, now, we can deliver something to you in, we're in VI, in Lecky. It shouldn't take more than 30 minutes, right? Yeah. 45 minutes. Yeah. There's fuel scarcity now, not our fault. There's traffic, traffic not yeah. our fault. One Agmiru with some uniform on, yeah. we'll stop him and tell him, you haven't paid this money for this. <laughs> not our fault. Yeah. A police officer hasn't eaten today. Yeah. He will stop you. Okay, you're not going anywhere, not our fault. I've gone calls, right, in the early days. All right, Oga, they've seized the bike or they've taken to the station. This guy's got like three, 400,000 now worth of goods in the back of his bike. Meanwhile, we've sent somebody else to go and deliver that good to the customer because this customer, he don't care about all this. It's okay, we've paid for his bill, no problem. And you have to bail the goods out as well. Ah. <laughs> this is okay. because that is yes. so. <laughs> okay, we've bailed the goods. Okay, it's six bottles of Hennessy. Bros, one bottle's missing. <laughs> That's how he brought it. How can that be how he brought it? The one that killed me. Okay, cool. Just take the drinks and go and deliver the goods. The guy starts calling me. What happened? Go outside. You know how a bike looks? You know where yeah. the engine is? The triangle. Yeah. Where the engine fits. All I saw when I went outside was the triangle. Where's the engine? Oh, guy, I brought the bike with the engine. I don't know. What? They removed the engine? <laughs> Straight. And then we're asking and they're like, that's how he brought the bike. Oh, he rode the bike here like this. Come on. All these things, the system's almost set up for you not to be able to find out anything just so you can get surprises sprung on you continuously. I built a store on Lecky Admiralty Way four or five years ago. And at that time, we put all the money we had on that. We built it, everything was finished. We were like six days to launch it. Just heard from someone, you need to come to your store. Something's going on, what's happening? We got there. The government were just breaking it down. Obviously, I was going mad. Now you think about the people that are meant to help you grow. It's like, okay, you say we've done something wrong. We don't know that. You now mark it, you tell us to come and see you. You don't tell us where, you don't tell us how, you don't tell us who. It took me three days to call so many people to find out where which even Paristatal is the one doing this. But before we even got the chance, they just broke it down. Now we've built this. Those same foolish people come and ask us for taxes. What, what about the crap that you, 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 you did back yeah. then? So yeah. now you're looking at us as the people to come and pay tax towards you. Yet our competitors who are not investing, you're not going to take tax from them. But we're the same people you bully. We're the same people you try and hold back down. But we're the same people you need money from. We just don't make sense. And we need more people to come back, to come and fill those places where people make sense. We just need to wash out the idiots. I'm bringing the good guys. Bring the good guys. We need to outnumber the bad, and we're not outnumbering the bad. The only thing everybody keeps on thinking about is jackpot, jackpot, jackpot. If everybody jackpot, you want to go and find disrespect. You know, when I go to the UK and I hear my friends talking about racism, I do not know how to relate to what they're talking about. Because when you live in Nigeria, I don't remember what racism feels like. The minute I step in the UK, I'm like, ah, racism. I remember <laughs> that thing. Racism. Yeah, I remember that thing. I remember, I remember. But don't worry, I'll deal with you today. I'm no. going. Don't worry, I'll be going soon. Don't worry. You used to live in the UK. Yeah, I, I grew up in the UK. So why did you decide to come back to Nigeria? Because a lot of people want to jack back. It's a, a really good question. When you ask about what made me come and why I am still here. And I think I watched a show that you had with a, with a friend of mine, E, and I couldn't be more with him in the feeling that I have. Me too, I'm tired of the disrespect. I grew up in the UK. The disrespect is from all angles, whether it's from the indigenous people that you live with or whether it's people from the East. And when I say East, I mean East of the world, not East of Nigeria. East, Ni anyone Nigeria I can deal with. 
and I can deal with what they bring. You're my brother, we'll fight it, we'll deal with it. But outside of that, we're not a bunch of idiots. We're not a bunch of incapable people as we keep being treated as. You know, some of the things that make me think again why I'm staying here is when I watch movements in America, Black Lives Matter until Africa matters. No black life anywhere in the world can ever matter. It can never matter. It's impossible for it to matter. At the end of the day, why would anyone in the UK or America not disrespect a Chinese person the way he disrespects us? Because he knows if enough Chinese people speak up, the Chinese government will just be like, you know what? No more TVs, no more technology, no more this, no more that. If any Russian in the UK got treated anyhow, Putin will be straight out there. Yo, no more gas, no more oil, or whatever he does work with them. But for black people, they get treated badly and especially for black Americans need to understand this you will continue to be treated badly until you start to understand that if us over here are not respected they will never respect you because what is the consequence of disrespecting a black American or a black British person I can still go to Africa and get your oil I can still go to Africa and get your cassava I can still go and get all your resources no matter how I treat you nothing will happen that's the height of disrespect. If you want respect for yourself, you want respect for your children, you want respect for your future generations, and you want respect for our brothers that are now out in the Caribbean, out in America, out in other parts of the world that are being maltreated in many, many ways. Until we, not just Nigeria, across Africa start to respect ourselves. The world respects one thing, money. And we have the money, but we're just giving it away for free. So as long as I can get something for free from you, I disrespect you anyhow. So I will stay here and deal with the crap my brother gives me. One of us will get tired. The good guy shouldn't keep getting tired. At some point in time, have to force the bad guy to get tired. And the more of us that keep on doing that, the more the bad guys will keep getting washed out. The more other people will see what we're doing and the resilience will grow. That's just how it's got to be. So I have a game for you, or a challenge for both yeah. of us. We're going to try five hoops. Five? Yeah, five. Okay. If I get the highest points, I'm going to pick one drink. Any of the drinks I want in your store. <laughs> That's good. And, 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 if, and if I win, and if, I, I will get all the YouTube revenue from this. <laughs> okay, let's go. Free drink for me very soon. We're drinking the free drink, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come <I'm> same. <laughs> this is for my subscribers. I guess he doesn't like you guys. <laughs> Always stay winning. Guys, I tried, I tried my best. So, so please subscribe to Tyo Aino. Watch this video a lot. Yeah. The money's been donated to the Larry <laughs> Drinks for NG Fund. <laughs>where do you see your company in the next five ten years i'd love to have a presence in every viable relevant market in africa possibly make headways and breaks into other markets uh, maybe in the middle east uh, eventually if they allow uh, <laughs> um, in europe as well because it's not about the West infiltrating us with their ideas. It's also about us infiltrating them with our ideas. Now, do they sell liquor over there? Yeah, but do they do it the way we do? Do they do it the way, the way we understand? There's always a fresh idea to bring. For example, now, yes, the UK is a modernized market. They had e-commerce companies before, but Amazon broke into that market. They're American, we can do the same. And, and I think Africans need to start having those ambitions. Once you have that raw ambition and tenacity, just, just go, go ahead and do it. When it comes to the people that do want to be entrepreneurs and have the ability to be entrepreneurs. The one mistake that I made that I would suggest anyone doesn't make is just, as long as you you, you know how to, to put things together in your head and you know you have the resilience and tenacity and the talent, just do it quickly and do it early and be ready to make the mistakes, be ready to suffer the consequences of the mistakes and just be ready to start again because you won't always make it the first time or second time or third time round. You have to keep on trying and keep on trying. The quicker, the earlier you make the mistake, the earlier you waste the money, the quicker you do these things, the better because you still got time to use the experience. You can't grow anything fast and hard careful. You just have to go for it. I mean, just Bezos, that tenacity and belief is what made him do it. I was watching that stuff thinking, this, this dude is crazy. Let's just keep 
keep on investing. We don't make the money, let's just forget it. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll get there, as long as you know how to. Like if all of this burnt today, dude, I would wake up in the morning and be like, cool, how do we do it again? What does being an African mean to you? Honestly, being an African and being a Nigerian, especially growing up from the West, it just means I wake up in the morning with abundance of opportunity. It just makes me proud. And I know that we're great, even though our immediate representation doesn't look great, but I feel great. I feel good about being here and I want people to, to come back and feel good as well because there is a lot of good here. There is a lot of good here. I come to drink some interview. How oh. does it feel better? You don't have to come with that. Or that online too. <laughs> <laughs> so lastly, what are some of the things yeah. you've learned on your journey to being yeah. where you currently are now that you feel a lot of young Africans out there can gain from? Don't be too fast in wanting to be an entrepreneur. Learn, and when I say learn, be willing to give your all to someone and don't look at it as you giving them everything. Look at it as if you give your all and give your best, you will learn so much about yourself, what you are capable of, what you can do, what you can't do. At the same time, you'll be absorbing a lot of knowledge, you'll be absorbing a lot of ability and just look at it as a building block to you building yourself for whatever it is you want to do in future. Even if it's working in a retail store, I worked in Debenham Selfridges, I was one of the best sales guys because I gave my all. I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd have a retail store where I would need all those skills and all those passion. I did it with my all, but that's just my character. But the point is, you just never know along the lines, whatever you're doing, when you ever need it in life, because you don't know what you're gonna end up being. You don't know what you're gonna end up doing. The other thing would be whatever it is you wanna do, get there fast and don't be too scared or too hesitant to do it because you're not gonna be great at it. You're not gonna be perfect at it. You're not gonna get it right. So the quicker you make all the mistakes, the quicker you can fix them. And it's all about speed in this generation. There's enough materials, tools, information out there to allow you to recover from any mistake. The only way you're gonna gather confidence is by going through something once. Donald Trump said he lost a billion dollars once, but he made it back. Once you've done something once, it's easy to do it again. again the, the fear so. factor is gone. The knowledge is there, the ability is there. So that's what you have to implement in everything you do. Thank you very much for sharing your story with us. I'm sure a lot of young entrepreneurs out there across Africa have learned from your story. Hope so. uh, I'm going to put the links to the company in the description below. So if you want to buy, if you want to buy drinks here in Nigeria, just reach out to them. All the phone numbers, emails, everything is down below in the description. So that's all we have to share with you guys today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. When I hear about people always complaining about the government, Whoa. Why is this inverter not Complaining working? Complaining about the government. The government. Yeah, the that, that shit was eh. Like what? That was. Oh, that's too quiet. Can you, they heard me. Yeah, they heard you. Eh, you're, you're talking too much. Yeah. <laughs>